Hi, I hope you are always happy. This is a 220 volt power inverter circuit that can turn on a 220 volt incandescent lamp, of course, with a voltage of 12 volts DC. I want to test the circuit and see if it can light this lamp or not. To start the circuit, I use the old computer power supply. This is the power supply for the computer. The output voltage is around 12 volts. This power supply can produce up to 8 amp of output current. The output is 12 volt on the yellow wire. I use the black and yellow wire. Of course, to turn on the power supply of the computer, we need to connect the green wire to the black. Should not cut this connection, otherwise the voltage in the yellow wire will be cut off. Switch on the power supply. Enter 12 volt DC into the circuit. First, I would like to measure the input voltage. I set to DC voltage. So the input is 12 volts. This is the computer power supply transformer that I took from this circuit. You can use the transformer of any computer power supply, of course, from the big transformer. We consider the output as the direction that has fewer pins. We connected the incandescent lamp to these two pins. A pin is often used to hold the transformer on the circuit because the weight of the transformer is quite large. At the end of the video, I use the homemade transformer to set up the circuit. You can make your own transformer. It is very simple task. We can touch the inverter circuit output. There is no problem. But we don't touch the other side because it shock us. I try different pins. Often two pins will produce the best light. Oh, this two pin has good light. Now, we want to analyze the circuit. I also took the inductor used in the circuit from the computer power supply circuit. So the transformer and the inductor both belong the old power computer supply. 
After making the circuit, put it inside the power supply box. Use the body of this box as a MOSFET cooler. Of course, insulating pads must be used under MOSFETs. I have used a piece of aluminum to cool the MOSFETs. Well, now I will draw the circuit on paper for you. In this circuit, we have used two MOSFET Z44. I will draw the appearance of the part to make it easier to understand. This is the first MOSFET gate drain source. This is the second MOSFET, gate, drain, and source. The source pins are connected to the input zero volt. Here is zero volts. It is the same negative circuit. To turn on the MOSFET, we need two resistors. Ten kilo ohm and two hundred twenty ohm resistance. This blue resistor is two hundred twenty ohms. The voltage of the resistor is not important. This resistance is ten kilo ohms. A separate resistor is needed for each MOSFET here and here. Place a 220 ohm resistor on the gate pin of both MOSFET. These two resistors are connected to each other and connected to 12 volt DC voltage. Ten kilo ohm resistor is connected to the gate pin. And the other side is connected to zero volt. It actually connects to the source pin. We do the same for the next MOSFET. These two resistors create a resistor divider for the gate pin. 10 kilo ohm resistor is connected to 0 volt and 220 ohm resistor is connected to positive voltage. We know that the MOSFET will be damaged if the gate pin voltage rises above 14 volt. For this reason, we put a 12 volt zener on the gate pin. The diode stripped head is connected to the gate pin. The other side to pin source or negative. This zener must be placed on both MOSFETs. In this circuit, I didn't use a zener diode because the input voltage to the circuit is not more than 12 volts. We need two inductors. The inductors are connected to the drain pin. The 
the other side of the inductor is connected to the positive voltage. Now we need two fast diodes. It is better to use the number 5000 or higher. There is a metal section on top of most MOSFETs. I draw like this so you can better understand the circuit. The fast diode should be connected from the gate of one MOSFET to the drain of the other MOSFET. The stripped head of the diode is connected to the drain. The drain pin of the second MOSFET is also connected to the gate of the first MOSFET with the help of a diode. The line head is connected again to the drain. Now, where is the output of the circuit? The circuit output is on drains. The same metal part above the MOSFET. Of course, if it is available. Otherwise, we select the drain pin. Now, we need a capacitor. Capacitor without poles. Its value is 330 nanofarads with a voltage of 1000 volts. Higher voltage is better. This circuit is complete. If you like, pause the video and draw the map. You can use different MOSFETs. If the MOSFET gets too hot, change the value of the 220 ohm resistor. Increase or decrease the quantity to get the best result. 10 kilo ohm resistance does not need to be changed. Only 220 ohm resistor connected to the positive voltage. The output of the circuit is connected to the transformer. This transformer belongs to an old computer power supply. In the power inverter circuit, we have to use the transformer in the reverse way in the circuit. That is, from the direction that was in the circuit and the high voltage entered in, now we have to connect the circuit that we made to the opposite side. Pay attention to this handmade transformer. I took this ferrite core from the car amplifier circuit. I put 25 turns of wire on it as the secondary coil. I only used 2 turns in the primary coil. If increase the number of turns of the primary coil, less current will be generated in the secondary side. Depending on the ferrite core dimensions, try different value to get the best result. Now, I will connect this transformer to the circuit to see if it can turn on the lamp or not.
As you can see, this transformer works well. Now let's look at the waveform with the help of oscilloscope. Connect the oscilloscope props to the gate pin of both MOSFETs. Where the resistance of 10 kilo ohm and 220 ohm are connected together. I connect the alligator clip to the negative or zero volt circuit. I press the automatic button. This is a three function device O1 HDS 242S. There is both a multimeter, a signal generator, and an oscilloscope. We have a not very accurate square waveform on the gates. The working frequency of this circuit is about 20 kHz. The first MOSFET is off and the second MOSFET is on. If put to on top of each other, there is a short time interval between turn off and turn on the MOSFET which we call dead time. If this time is not short, both MOSFET will be turned on together and will be damaged. These two inductors become hot. Use a fan for the circuit. In the next videos, we will talk more about switching circuits. Well, I hope you liked this video. Thank you for watching this video.